Hi, I'm Greg Gesswein, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate our new PUK U5 Micro TIG welder. What's great about this machine is that it's designed for mold and die repair, and this can help save you time and money by keeping mold repair in house instead of sending out for service. It's very easy to use, and nearly anyone in your shop can begin welding within a very short period of time. It's also mobile. You can transport this around your company and weld any mold size, large or small. And finally, it utilizes very little heat, so we don't have to worry about the heat sink and heat distortion that we get from traditional TIG welders. So let's get started, and I'll begin by showing you the individual system components. The PUK microscope has many features that make welding easy. It has 10 power optics and an LED light, which is adjustable. It also has a built-in shutter that gives eye protection during the welding process. The base is magnetic, and it makes it very easy to maneuver the microscope around. And you can connect it directly to your mold base or to your welding table. And finally, it's very flexible. If I loosen this knob right here, I can adjust in nearly any position. And we can even go vertical if you want to do an impress repair. Let's take a look at three system components. The handpiece, the magnetic cable, and the electrode sharpener. We'll start with the handpiece. This is very important. This is what you're going to use to create welds every time. And basically, we have a tungsten carbide electrode here. And the handpiece is also going to transport argon gas, so that when the weld is created, it's surrounded by an argon atmosphere, preventing the uh, oxidation. Now, it's very important to ensure that this electrode is sharp and clean in order to get the best results. So what you'll need to do is remove the electrode. And to do so, you need to slide this cap off, loosen this nut, and then you can remove the electrode. I then use the electrode sharpener, and this has an on and off switch right here on the side. So press that, and then apply the electrode at about a 15 degree angle, and just spin it. Spin it until you get a very fine and sharp tip. At this point, we can replace the electrode back into the handpiece. And we want to make sure it's extending about a quarter of an inch outside of this ceramic nozzle on the front. That allows for the optimum flow of argon. Simply slide the cap back on. Now the handpiece is ready to go. But before we can weld, we must make sure that the magnet is connected to our piece. Otherwise, it won't weld. So connect this magnet directly to the piece of metal that you're going to weld. The magnet serves as the positive end of the circuit. The handpiece is the negative end. So when the negative and the positive make contact, it's going to start the firing process. When welding with the PUK, you must use argon gas to get the best results. The argon gas is going to eliminate oxidation, and it's also going to give you clean looking welds. This regulator is included with the PUK. And the dial on the right hand side is going to show the flow of argon gas. So adjust the needle before you begin welding until it's in the red zone, which is right around two liters per minute. When it's in the red zone, you're now ready to weld. So now let's discuss the touch screen. And this is one of the key features of the PUK system. This touch screen has pre-programmed settings for mold repair applications. And this is going to make it much easier to select the correct setting for your welding application. On this touch screen, we have settings for three different metals, steel, aluminum, and copper, and four different welding wire diameters, 10 thousandths, 15 thousandths, 20 thousandths, and 30 thousandths, and then five different surface applications for flat, edge, corner, rib, and three-corner. So at the touch of your fingertips, 
you have access to 60 different mold repair applications. Let's take a closer look. On the top of the touch screen, you can select the metal that you're working with and the diameter of your welding wire. And it acts like a wheel. So just swipe from left to right and you can bring up different metals and wire diameters. Let's say we're welding with steel 30 thousandths. There we go. Now the next step is to select the surface application. We have flat, edge, corner, rib, and three corner. Let's say we're doing a parting line repair. I'm gonna select edge. And now we're ready to weld. About 90% of the time, this setting is gonna be perfect. However, if you'd like to make minor adjustments, you can do so by adjusting the knob here, and then you can begin welding. We've reviewed the individual system components, so now let's get ready to weld. Before you begin welding, there's a few things you want to check off to make sure you have the correct setup. The first, the microscope. You want to make sure this is set up in a position that's comfortable for you and gives you a clear field of view. The next is the handpiece. You want to take a look at the electrode and make sure it's sharp, it's clean, and it's extended about a quarter of an inch outside of the handpiece. My argon gas is turned on and it's set at two liters per minute. And my magnet is connected to the workpiece. If this wasn't connected to the workpiece, it wouldn't start welding. So now that we have everything set up, the last thing you wanna do is ensure your work surface is clean. If there's any contaminants or grease or dirt, that's gonna affect the integrity of the weld. So use some alcohol spray, and I have some compressed alcohol. And just clean the surface with a few wipes. There we go. And also, do the same with your welding wire. This is my welding wire. And just give that a few wipes as well to remove any contaminants. OK. So we're looking good. So let's start welding. So now the machine is ready to weld. And if this is your first time using the PUK, you're going to want to get comfortable with a handpiece. So let's start by creating some welds without any wire. In order to get the handpiece to fire, the electrode will need to make contact with the surface for about one second. Again. Now, if you apply too much pressure, the electrode might get stuck. And this is no good. Conversely, if you have too light of a touch or if your hand is shaking, it might not fire at all. So what you want is a nice steady touch. Then, when you're comfortable, you can introduce rapid fire mode if you allow the electrode to make immediate contact with the surface again. This is gonna be useful when you're creating a bead or you want faster results. So practice with the handpiece for about five minutes. Then when you're comfortable, we can start welding with wire. When we weld with wire, it's usually best to lay the wire flat against the surface, as opposed to a point like this. When the wire is flat, it's gonna be more connected to the base material, and we're gonna get a better flow of electricity. When we introduce the electrode, we need to make sure the electrode is in front of the wire, making contact with the base material. We do not want to place the electrode directly on top of the wire. That's just going to create a ball on the wire. Rather, we want the penetration of the weld to go into the base material. So now I'm going to connect my ground and begin welding. Again, the electrode is in front of the wire. And I can do one at a time, or rapid fire mode.
Notice how I'm keeping the wire still and I'm moving the electrode down the line. This is going to allow me to get nice tight beads here. And what we want is these overlaps. These tight overlaps are going to allow for a complete penetration into the base material without any gaps. Then, when we're done welding, we can use our brush here to clean it up. And there we go. The technique for welding an edge is very similar to welding a flat surface. You want to lay the wire flat against that edge and bring the electrode to the front of the wire. The only difference is there's a little less material here to help us keep that wire still. So when doing an edge, you really need to have a, a steady hand. I'm on my edge preset, and this is 15,000 diameter wire. So let's do a few welds. So again, I'm keeping the wire steady, and I'm just moving the electrode down the line here. And that's giving me these nice overlaps. I'll continue. What happens sometimes is that wire might get a little bit stuck on that edge, and that's a good thing, because that's going to help us keep that wire right on that edge. And this preset is really a great setting for this application. So there we go. Let me brush that off so we can take a look. But yeah, that's a nice, I got some nice coverage there over both edges. Then the next step would be just to grind that down and that, that edge should be repaired.